Greetings, everyone. We've had some bad weather lately, so I thought I'd take some time to go over the plans for the house and see what I need to order for the next step after we pour the concrete foundation. So the next step would be the uh, pressure treat mud sills that need to run along the top of the foundation itself. The, and then the floor joists, which are going to be the, the wooden I-beams. They're LPI 20 pluses. Uh, and I'll give you a shot of what that looks like right here. So here is the detail for the floor joists. Uh, we have the LPI 20 uh, wooden I beam or I joists. And then here's those piers that I've been digging inside the foundation. I've already purchased all of the steel, like these brackets that are going to have to sit in the piers. So what I'm looking at is this uh, six by six post. And then I have a Simpson strong tie uh, PC six bracket that ties the post to the uh, six by eight header or girder. And then the other thing that I will need are these ITS hangers by Simpson that will hold the wooden I-beam or I-joist. So those hangers uh, will go from the top of the mud sill right here, and they will hang down. And the reason we did this was we wanted the profile of the house to sit lower on the, um, uh, to the, I guess the finished grade level, because uh, we wanted as few steps as possible going up into the house and uh, just try to make it a little more accessible as uh, we get older in age. So I started with the ITS brackets that are going to hold these floor joists. And how I figured that out is I counted all the floor joists uh, in the house and I had 76. And I need a hanger on each side of the I joist. So I just doubled that number to be 152 of those joist hangers. The next thing I did was I went out and I measured because I don't know if these joists uh, come custom fit. I've never used them before. So when I go to the um, lumber yard or the building supply, uh, I'm going to find out if I measured or if I order these by the exact length or do they come uh, preset at certain lengths. So, but anyway, I went out and I measured, um, each distance of these joists to figure out what I needed. And then I could just count how many of those I needed in per section of wall. I know it's not the prettiest, but here was my field notes. So basically started over on the uh, in-law unit side and measured. So I just kind of did a little sketch of what the, the house looks like and it, the bump outs kind of match and whatnot. So over on the far right where the in-law unit is, uh, those are 30 feet, three inches uh, is the length that I'm gonna need. So I have all the lengths set out and then I counted out what I needed for the amount of joists and 
made a list. Uh, there's two sections that are the same length at 34 feet, 10 inches. So I'll actually need 25 of those. And then there was one other little section and I'll take you over to that which I caught, which is right here. So there's a, a joist that runs right along the side of this interior footing and crosses over this girder and stops. And then another eye joist is sitting right next to it at the end of this interior shear wall and continues it the rest of the way down. So, uh, in order to simplify it, uh, this joist is essentially the same length as uh, these over here. So I just added one more to that number. And then this longer one going out here was almost the same size as these on this side. Um, they're It'll, the joist will be a little longer. Uh, these over here are maybe a foot longer than what this one's supposed to be. So, but just for, I can cut it to fit later, but just for ease of ordering, so I don't have, I mean, as it is, I already have about 10 different lengths, so. I just figured that would make things easier. So the next thing I looked at was the PC6 bracket here, and I essentially need one of those for every pier footing under a girder. So I just count, I started counting those up, each of these squares, and those were all the holes that you've watched me dig in the last few videos. And I have 26 of those. Um, these other special footings, they have um, a bracket that goes right in the cement and a beam that's going to go all the way up through the floor to the ceiling. Or I'm sorry, not a beam, but a post. So those I had already ordered in an earlier order when I ordered uh, anchor bolts and other things. So I just needed... Uh, a PC6 for each of these and that was 26 total next I'm going to use the scale ruler to figure out how much of the um, pressure treated mud sill board that I needed so if I get them in 16 foot lengths, how many I'll need uh, to go around the perimeter and cover the interior shear walls. And then I got a couple of short pieces here in front of the garage. So I figured out that I need 30 pieces of the pressure treat sill at 16 feet to make it all the way around the top of the foundation. And I'm using the three foot, I'm sorry, three inch thick pressure treat mud sill rather than a regular like two by six. Um, it's just so much stronger by the time you drill all the holes for the anchor bolts and then the screws for that come in on the side of that mud sill to hold the siding and the, um, the shear wall. And then the nails that come down from above when you're putting in the flooring and the walls. Uh, it's just better to have that thicker pressure treated sill.
Now I'm going to figure out how many 16 foot girders I need. And that is the six by eight right there on the detail that holds up the eye joists. So let's see how many 16 footers I need to do this row, this row, and that row back there. So it looks like I will need 13 6 inch by 8 inch by 16 footers for those girders. Another thing I found in the detail is my structural engineer wants to use a section of the eye joist in between each joist that is running horizontally across the house. So every time the joists pass over one of these girders, I need an eye joist block in between. So for all of these, all of these joists along in here, I'm gonna pass over two girders, so I'll need two of those blocks. So I'll need to add, I'll need to order extra eye joists just to be able to cut those blocks. So let's get those counted up. So I had to make up this little drawing to figure out the block spacing in between these joists. So these eye joists are 16 inches on center and they are two and a half inches wide. So that would give me an inch and a quarter in from center line this way, an inch and a quarter in from center line this way for two and a half inches. And 16 inches minus two and a half will give me 13 and a half inches, which is what these blocks need to be. So trying to get some what close of an even number for ordering extra eye joists to cut these blocks. So I took the 13 and a half inches times 35 blocks for a total of 472 inches. So if I divide that by 12, that would give me how many feet, how many feet long the I joist needs to be and that's 39.375 which is good because every time I cut a block I'm gonna lose a little bit of length so if I order a 40 footer that'll give me plenty for making those cuts so I'll be able to get 35 blocks out of a 40 footer uh, I joist and I need 130 total blocks. So if I get four of those I joists at 40 foot long, I'll have plenty with and I'll actually have some left over. So next I need to figure these posts here and they are going to be a little bit under three foot long. So if I get 12 footers, I'll be able to get a 12 foot long six by six. I'll be able to get four out of there. So let's see how many we will need there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and a couple left over there. So I'll need seven. So 
So seven, six by six by 12 foot long of the dug fur posts. I think I've got a pretty good material list put together now. So I'm gonna contact the building supply store and see what the availability for this is and get an estimate of the cost. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little something different, kind of give you an insight of the things that I have to do behind the scenes when you don't see me working out there at the job site. So I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.